So we've got two vacancies left, the Texans, and then the team that was the last one to the party because Sean Payton retired, retired, resigned. He ain't retired a couple of weeks after the season ended. The Saints and Chris, I think that, and we talked about this briefly earlier, even though Eric Bannemi's in play, even though Eric Glenn's, Aaron Glenn's in play, excuse me, I think Dennis Allen is the favorite because of the continuity that naturally is baked in. Pete Carmichael removed his name from consideration last week. I think he realizes Dennis Allen gets it before him. Right. And I think it's part of the deal that Dennis Allen can now say, I'm keeping the Pete staff. Carmichael. I'm, yeah. I'll be the head coach. I'll run the defense like I did the night that we shut out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and yeah. Tom Brady nine to nothing on right. Sunday Night Football. Let's try the continuity thing and see where it goes. And, and I think that that's going to be attractive to the organization, at least in the short term. You can always hire the flavor of the month later if it doesn't work. But at least for now, this is an opportunity to not have a jarring change from Sean Payton to the post Sean Payton regime. I, I, I agreed. And I, I think you could sell that. And I could certainly get behind that. I mean, Dennis Allen is without question one of the best defensive minds in the sport. You know, it's a little bit like we talked about with the Raiders and Rich Bisaccia. I know they went another way, but I just it was one of those. I know we had the conversation of like, you know, one thing I'd be wary of is blowing up a good thing. Gus Bradley's a good D coordinator. You know, Greg Olson's a good OC. You have some things in place that are you can build around. And I think the Saints have probably looked at their situation and go, wait, yeah, we do. We have a guy that we think is a legit head coach, you know, and Dennis Allen's talented. He knows what he's doing on that side. Carmichael is an extension of Sean Payton. And I think between that and now if they can just find a quarterback to play for their football team, uh, that the ownership probably looks at that as being a, a positive move. And, you know, you mentioned the Saints briefly when we were talking about Aaron Rodgers. And once Sean Payton resigned, yeah. that kind of moved the Saints out. Yeah. But... And they've got cap issues, too. I know. That's where Mickey I just... Loomis always finds a way to work magic. Right. But mm, I, I know the Saints were on the radar screen pre payton Maybe, maybe to, if you're looking for a place in the NFC and uh, the Packers say, oh, we're not trading you to the 49ers, we're not trading you to the Buccaneers, okay, we'll trade you to the Saints. Yeah. You know, that's a place where at least when you go through the door, the expectations aren't going to be as high, and maybe some of that Sean Payton magic is still floating around where you can you can yeah. try to yeah. put something together sure. and, and get get back to the playoffs and may, maybe maybe Aaron Rodgers is better going to a team where he makes to the playoffs as the four five six or seven seed not as the top seed how did they win the Super Bowl yeah as the six seed Sixth they've seed. been the three seed at, or the one seed at least three times over the course of Rodgers career and every time yeah they haven't they done didn't it. make it right didn't so. make it two seeds haven't worked out great for them either really I mean we saw the two seed uh, you know two years ago or three years ago lose to the 49ers right they were a two seed the year they lost to Seattle in that game they blew in the fourth quarter up 18 to 7 but you know ultimately I think with Aaron Rodgers and the Saints thing listen I, I can get behind that you know as far as Dennis Allen I just I, I don't know I felt like the Saints thing went out the door when when Sean Payton left I do you know You're I guess in my heart right. my heart of hearts and, and then I think added on to that you know what's the Michael Thomas situation right there I think there's a lot of questions there and like you said they have probably more serious salary cap issues than Green Bay let alone I think more of a aging team than Green Bay and that, for me, I would probably say that takes Rodgers out of that. If yeah, you don't want to be part of a rebuild with the Packers, yeah, why, why would he want to, to jump there? to a new team that's yeah. in the process of rebuilding? Right. And why would they want him? Why would they want him? Yeah. That's the other side of yeah. it, too. So that probably doesn't doesn't make sense. But I, I'm just in the mode where I'm not going to yeah. rule out anything. I you never it. know. No, no, you I never know. We're Crazier just things have happened. Ball. Yeah. Crazier things have happened this week. So uh, you got to be ready for anything. And the Saints, if they don't go with Rodgers, as we think they won't, where do they go? What do they do for quarterback? They try to draft somebody and develop? Do they give Taysom Hill the opportunity to become the guy? You, you've, you've still got uh, Trevor Simeon floating around. Yeah, I know. He's you know, still James, there. James Winston, the problem with Jameis Winston is he's not going to be healthy until you've already had to make your decision about who you're going to right. be working with. Right. Um, they, 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 they got a hell of a decision to make a quarterback. They do. they got, they got to figure something out. The one good thing is, I think you mentioned it. I mean, you, I don't think you mentioned it. You mentioned it. They have Taysom Hill, at least as far as of a jack-of-all-trades. If there's not something that really jumps out or pops out to them, they can just say, okay, we're going to ride him as a quarterback and maybe draft a guy, develop, whatever, or wait another year because they, they know the next year's draft's going to be better. There's some quarterbacks that might be free agents. 
but uh, certainly got a decision there because I think even you know even in spite of Jameis's injury you know I think even if he didn't have that I think there was still going to be big questions about whether he was the guy going forward I mean we broke down some of his games you know, they were they weren't necessarily you know entrusting him and letting him just let it fly they were managing him in managing wow. him we talked about his short game inaccuracies at times and things like that so I think they were going to be looking for a QB almost no matter what everything they gained in the downfield passing over Drew Brees, right. they, they lost, lost the in the managing stuff. underneath right. the way that Drew Brees did it with precision, yeah. the timing, running the offense to perfection. Jameis Winston could never quite get there. And how many times did we see him? You know, and we didn't see a lot of him. He was injured week eight or week nine, but it was all, he was always looking for that deep shot. Yeah, and always looking for it, always looking for it, and then he'd settle for something underneath. But it, it, I have a feeling that it won't be him. I don't know where we're going to see him as a backup next year because yeah. that knee injury happened so late. Unless right. he is ready to go very soon these seats are going to get filled with tentative starters and he's not going to be one of them hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports